Working as a developer for over a decade, I have built hundreds of applications. And over the last couple of years with all the advancements in AI, I've probably vibed out hundreds, maybe even thousands into production. I've used Claude Code, Windsurf, Cursor, VS Code with Copilot, Lovable, Bolt, all of these pretty extensively. And today, I'm gonna give you my top five tips for getting the absolute best results out of Cursor. So let's get into it. Number one, and this might not be the biggest surprise in the world, but be super specific about what you actually want to build. Pretend you're a senior dev that's trying to nudge a junior dev who's new to coding in the right direction. What's the first thing you want them to do? Now, I hope you didn't answer jump into coding immediately, because that's gonna be disastrous. You want them to come up with a detailed step-by-step -step plan. You want them to talk to stakeholders. You want them to ask clarifying questions if they're not sure and come back to you with exactly what they've learned before they jump into building it. And that's exactly what we should do with Cursor. So instead of saying, build me a SaaS app, which just has so much ambiguity, this could just go in any direction. You probably want to specify what kind of SaaS app. So build me a SaaS app where users can vote on topics they want me to cover in future YouTube videos. Now, thankfully, this one already exists. It's called the comments section. So go and leave a comment about what you want to see in the future. But for our SaaS app, we also want to specify like what are the limitations of this SaaS product? At what point do they need a subscription? So let's say the user gets five free votes and then needs to pay $20 per month. We should also specify which technology do we actually want this built in. Now, I'm gonna let the robots do a lot of work here, but I probably still wanna be able to review the code and understand it. I don't have much experience with Haskell, so I probably don't want a SaaS app that's built in Haskell. I'm pretty familiar with Next.js. So I'm gonna say, build this app using Next.js. We should also specify how we want it to look. So go with a modern, minimalist, dark mode UI. And we should go on extensively with how we actually want it to function. We should give the LLM as much information as we possibly can so it understands what to do. So this app will need to take payments. Now, you might not know what the best system is for taking payments. And so you can ask Cursor to provide three options for payment processing services that offer subscription payments. Also provide a summary of why they would be a good option. So we're gonna let Cursor go and do that research and then present its findings back to us. And so we don't even want to start building the SaaS app yet. We want to write a detailed plan for a SaaS app where the users can vote on topics. Another great thing we can do to help with this clarity is say, if you are not 90% sure on how to proceed, ask me some clarifying questions. And so now, rather than just jumping straight into the problem and building some trash that no one's happy with, we're getting Cursor to come up with a detailed plan that we can read through and make sure we're happy with, we can make any tweaks that we want to make, and then when we actually start building our application, we have much more clarity over what we're trying to build. And you can see we have a lot of information, but before it does too much work, it is asking us these clarifying questions. So what are the voting mechanics? Do we want user management, content management, and admins, business logic, additional features? And it's also provided three payment processing options for us to choose from. So I usually go through each one of those points and say, number one, this is the answer to that question. So we want a little up arrow for the user to vote. And then number two, we need users, etc. It also looks like its recommendation is to use Stripe because it has the most flexibility and lowest fees and excellent integration with Next.js. So we can also specify to use Stripe for payment processing. And we can say update the plan 
with these clarifications. And you'll see we have a detailed plan of the core features and user flow, key functionality, technical architecture, and we've started thinking about the database schema. Cursor's a little bit keen here and wants to start building the app. Classic junior. So let's say, don't start building the app, just give me a detailed plan. And now we have an even more ludicrously long detailed plan, which is exactly what we asked for. And so we have an overview, some technical architecture, the folder structure, because it's already started to think about how this application is going to come together, the database schema, the UI and UX general feel of the application, the authentication flow, the payment integration with Stripe, core features around that voting system, topic management, all of that, as well as all of the endpoints that will need to exist. And then we have these development phases, which is the really important part about coming up with this detailed plan. We now have these different steps that we can refer back to as we're building out our application. We've also got some business logic, security considerations, and analytics and metrics. It really is quite ambitious. It wants to build the best possible SaaS application for us, which is great. Which brings me to tip number two, and that is once you have a plan, ask Cursor to save it so that we can come back to it later. So we can say, save this detailed plan in a markdown file called scope.md. And now we have this scope.md file, which we can accept and contains all of that detailed information about what we're gonna build, which we can continue referring back to with our LLM, or we can share this with the rest of the team and check it into something like GitHub. So everyone agrees on what we're trying to build. Which brings me to number three, where we actually start building things. And that's that when we start building things, start really, really small. Don't just say, great, go and implement that entire massive plan, because then it needs to create the Next.js project, worry about the database schema, authentication, what the UI looks like, what the voting system does, how the payment integration works. We want to start as small as we possibly can, as granular a problem as we can solve, so then we can test that that works before we move on to the next bit. So back over in our chat, rather than saying, awesome, go build it, we want to say something like, Let's focus on the first part of phase one. So we want it to create a Next.js app. And we can even clarify this further. Only do this one step and then mark it as complete in the scope.md file. And so it's gonna ask us for approval for each step of this process. So we can say run the f I don't know why to create the Next.js app. It's gone and run Amazon Q, but sure, we'll, we'll, we'll just let it cook. And this is actually the perfect example of why we wanna keep those changes as small and isolated as possible. Cause the LLM might just like hallucinate and run some CLI tool it doesn't need to run, or it might go and change some unrelated part of the code base and break some other feature. We wanna keep those changes as small as possible and then commit them to something like Git so that we can roll back really, really easily. And so the way I usually do this is once I have an application in a working state, and so here we've created this Next.js application, let's assume that worked perfectly and functionally it solves the problem, but maybe the design isn't quite there yet. Rather than trying to fix the design straight away, I would usually initialize this project with Git. I would then just add everything. This is just telling me there's another Git repo, so let's trash our YouTube voting app dot Git. And so now we can Git add everything, and then we can do a quick commit message that says something like, form submission working, but design needs to be fixed. And then once that's committed locally, I go back to asking cursor to do the next thing, like fix the design and make it dark mode. And so if cursor happens to break something during this step or while changing the design, like tinkers with some functionality somewhere else, we have this really convenient save point that we can come back to. You can think of it kind of like a computer game. You don't beat one boss and then keep playing the game all the way through until the next boss and then beat them. You save little points along the way, little incremental steps towards your larger goal. And so that's what we're doing here. And if you don't like that you now have a whole bunch of little like whip partially broken commits throughout your code base, you can always squash these down into one more descriptive commit 
before you push this up to GitHub or share it with the rest of the team. Number four, when you get errors, and trust me, you will get a lot of errors, copy them, paste them into the chat, and ask Cursor to fix them. You don't even have to like be clean about it. Just take this big, ugly error, paste it into the chat, and say, fix it. If you want to take it one step further and provide some additional context, you can say like, this is what I was expecting to happen and this is what I'm seeing. Or even better, take a screenshot of the application in this broken state and just drag and drop that into the chat and say, this is what the application currently looks like. And if you get stuck in a loop where Cursor keeps saying, oh, I know the problem, I'll go and change this, and then just changes something random and it doesn't fix the problem, you can always try a different model. So if you're using Claude for Sonnet, you could try GPT 4.0 and see if a fresh perspective can help solve the issue. I'm just realizing in my analogy of the junior dev, this is basically just like firing that dev and replacing them with another junior. You're fired. Don't do that. Let's say we have an entire team of juniors and we can allow them to collaborate together on a better, more robust solution. Number five, give Cursor as much additional context as you can. So you can say, here is the docs page for the feature I want to build and then give it a link to some docs that you want it to read. You could take a screenshot of a particular design you like and say, I wanna build something like this. Or even better, set up MCP servers under .cursor slash mcp.json so that the LLM can query its own context about your specific project in some other system, which is exactly what we do in this video right here. We configure Cursor to use the Superbase MCP server so it has additional context about your database schema, edge functions, your authorization rules. It's awesome. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.